I'm not sure that this was intended to be the purpose of these videos that we post here for the Audrain Automobile Museum, but they're turning into a very interesting journey for me, which is the journey of what makes a particular car a particular car. And especially when you're dealing with a brand like Porsche, what is it that makes a Porsche a Porsche? The car I'm in today is a 2016 Porsche 911R. And by just about any definition, any Porsche file certainly, will tell you that this is a car that is both amazingly capable and somewhat hotly debated. I've got the reputation of, of somebody who is supposedly not a Porsche guy. And I take that uh, with quite a grain of salt because I like Ferraris, but I'm not a Ferrari guy. I like Citroëns. I'm not a Citroën guy. I like Bentleys. I'm not a Bentley guy. But I do like for a car to have a certain amount of character that's different from something else. And my problem has been, if it can be easily defined, is that modern high-performance cars, whether they be sports cars or luxury GT cars, all have a certain sameness. They're all fast, some of them make a really nice sound, but ultimately they're not engaging cars to drive. They feel like sort of two-seater versions of luxury cars with loud engines and, 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 and great acceleration. When a manufacturer builds a great reputation like Porsche has, it's for a good reason. Porsche established its reputation as the giant killer. Superbly engineered, small, light, nimble cars with not a lot of power, but that easily punched above their weight. As time went on, as is the case with just about every car, as my friend uh, Jay likes to uh, always intone, the lower, longer, wider syndrome always takes effect. If you were to park a modern 911, next to a 356. It's astonishing. It's as if somebody's taken a, a little child's toy and inflated it with, with an air hose. Um, I often thought the cars that Lotus builds, certainly the, the Elise, for instance, is so much like the car that I think should be a Porsche in the spirit of the 356. But Nonetheless, what Porsche is building today is something very, very different, and yet, deep in the Porsche engineering staff, there existed a desire to do something a little different, something that really harkened back to what Porsche was all about. And this car, the 2016 911R, is the result of just that desire. Of course, as I mentioned in previous videos, it's always interesting and slightly dangerous when a manufacturer goes back and uses a legendary name for a new car. The 911R was a very, very special variant of the 911 in 1967 that was designed to go GT racing. They never built the requisite number needed to have it homologated for GT racing, so they raced as prototypes. And that's a much, much more difficult class to race in. But nonetheless, they were amazing on the track and certainly reflected well to the 911s that they were selling on the, on the road. And so as Porsche came out with more and more capable performance cars, cars that you could drive on the street, but really track day cars like the GT3 RS, some purists, most of them within Porsche, really longed for the days of the stripped down essential performance car. One that you could easily drive in the street, but also have fun on track days as well. Certainly not an out and out race car. And the result was the 911R. And this car is very special because of something that I'm doing with my right hand that you don't do in a GT3 RS, which is shifting. It's got a manual six-speed gearbox. That was one of the things that the purist absolutely demanded and that Porsche delivered in this car. 
And there is certainly the tactile satisfaction of six-speed gearbox, especially this one. It's a really short throw, very, very responsive gearbox. And even on these local roads with a lot of traffic, or perhaps even more so on these local roads with a lot of traffic, the gearbox is very rewarding to use. Now, one of the other things that is a throwback to the early 911 is also this great houndstooth check interior. It's incredibly characterful and, uh, and also quite practical, actually. You know, there's nothing better than a cloth interior to hold you in place as you're driving. Although, the incredibly aggressive side bolsters on these seats are making sure that I can't move more than an inch in either direction when this car turns. I feel like I'm being given a really, really, really big bear hug uh, on my hips. Um, not altogether uh, unpleasant, but certainly aggressive. As is always the case in a car like this, no matter how sporty it is, it's got a sport mode as well. Because, well, why not? There's also a choice for an exhaust cutout to get additional music from the exhaust. So I'm in sport mode right now. And I've got the exhaust enhancement on. And it's a very satisfying rumble. shift you get a little blip automatically electronically programmed which is also a neat thing and that instantaneous throttle response I was talking about is right there to make sure that this car has the stop to match the go it's also got carbon ceramic brakes and I am of mixed feeling about brakes like this. I think they're incredible capable, God knows. But if you're going from car to car, shifting from car to car, brakes like this spoil you very quickly. You have to make sure that you don't expect this kind of response in any other car that you're driving at the moment because you're not going to have it. Formula One drivers often talk about the fact that the response in their cars, the acceleration and the handling is not really the thing that, that gets them. It's the fact that you stand on the brakes and the car stops now. That's the feeling you get from this 911R. It does really bring me back to the feeling of, I hesitate to say vintage 911 because we're talking about cars from the 1960s and 70s, and to me that still isn't vintage, but certainly a 911 of a different time. There was a lot of the analog in the 911R, and that's something that they purposely built in. But the question is, is there enough of it for me? Well, there probably couldn't ever be enough retro or analog for me, because um, that's the kind of guy I am. That's what I want from a car. But nonetheless, in today's marketing age, this is probably as much as the Porsche engineers can get away with. without being spanked by the marketing guys. A friend of mine told the story about this car and driving it in Germany with the development engineer that was responsible for it and uh, how he sort of innocently asked a question about air conditioning and navigation and all that being in this car, power windows, and the engineer just went completely bonkers it was clear that he did not want any of these things, but they couldn't actually build a car and sell a car today to their clientele without having those features which they viewed as essential. And it would have been a really interesting exercise to see what this car could have been without air conditioning, without electric windows. It could have been something quite astonishing. Now, on a summer day, in New England, I'm not quite sure I'd want to drive it. I'm driving right now in great comfort in my blazer, my bow tie, the windows up, the air conditioning on a nice automatic setting. But nonetheless, it's still 
a 911R. Which brings me to an even larger question. With all of the various performance variants that Porsche has built, is the 911R where they should have stopped? And instead of building 991 of them to match the 991 designation of the car, could they have built 5,000, 10,000 of these cars? Could they still be building this car today to satisfy a very, very, very hungry clientele? Well, we'll never know. But does this make the 911R the ultimate modern 911? This car certainly makes a very satisfying sound. And it's got the go to go with the sound. It's not just playback on audio. I'm not a huge fan of video game driving or simulated driving, but you get the feeling that you're in something incredibly dynamic. That windshield is a screen, but the real world's outside. And the vibration you're getting in the seat can't be programmed in by a computer. That's the vibration that you feel from the road. You feel it in the soles of your feet, in your butt, in your hands on the wheel. It's an amazing accomplishment. One of the things that's so neat about this 911R is that when you downshift and you get that blip, it sounds like an angry lion. It's very much in character. It's just raring to go. Even at legal speeds, this is still a really satisfying drive. I think the GT3 RS is going to have to do a lot to make me forget this. I'm not sure it can. This for me, I think, is, is the ultimate in the modern 911 driving experience. I could be proven wrong. Who knows? I might even become a Porsche guy. Oh my god. Hi, it's Donald with this week's fun fast fact quiz question. The 911 began life in 1964 as the 901, the project number of the model. Of course, the 911R is technically a 991. While each subsequent development has carried a different number, the model name has remained the same. How many project numbers have carried the 911 name from 1964 to present? If you think you know, please write it in the comments below. Wait till next week to find out our answer. Thanks. If you like these videos, let your friends know. Subscribe, comment, share.